Nice. Thanks, Wendy. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to Great see you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for cash. Thanks for cash. Well, 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 well. Good morning, Paula. Good morning. How are you guys feeling after such a tremendous long stint? <laughs> tremendous. I feel tremendous. In the true sense of the term. Mm. <laughs> we made it rob we made it paul we're into uh the 25th of 25 sessions the last four percent of the day of this one <laughs> one complete circle of the sun mm -hmm. so did you um did you just swap off uh because i i know i couldn't stay on for as many as you would as you did but um I noticed, uh, Rob, you were in pretty much all of them. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, that was the plan. <laughs> you were, you got some sleep, I'm assuming? Maybe a little bit? Uh, a little bit. A oh. little bit. A little bit. We uh, tried to do uh, a uh, pre-recorded uh, session, so that was a bit of a blink somewhere in the, the wee hours. So uh, that was OK. and. Good cup of strong coffee an hour ago. Could probably use another one right now. But other than that. Well, I look back. It's funny. Sometimes you look back and uh, certain certain segments stand out. Uh, and then other ones, you're like, yeah, that was really good. Uh, I'm not too sure. There's no rhyme or reason to which ones uh, fall into which camp. But if I look back at our agenda, we kicked off the day way back at 730 yesterday, Rob. So uh mm. Uh, it's coming up to the 24 hour mark. We started off with the day of the Swan kickoff, and then we had a uh, Gray Swan Guild news hour where we um, tumbled through some headlines. And then Dave DeBacher came in and mm -hmm. uh, talked to us about myth and metaphor. Any recollections of, uh, of Dave's segment? Myth and metaphor, yeah, um, slightly. <laughs> It was so long. I'm trying to think of one pithy thing to say. I thought it was good. Yeah, I thought, I thought yeah, the, the food construct the, uh, of uh, it was the the uh, I'm good. It's it's coming back. I think the Descartes, the machine, or are we stewards of the planet? Yeah, you had some powerful uh, a powerful metaphor around nature, right? Nature as a, either a, a nurturing parent or as mm. uh, as something that we can engineer. I thought that was a, an interesting one. So uh, then we had Gord come in. He talked about um, meta people and the promise of AI delivered, and uh, it's kind of a, a questioning AI delivered. But he had plenty of examples. I definitely have to go through his video again just to go through all of. Uh, he uh, he inundated us with some really good stuff. I um, believe he appeared. I appeared as a fox in that one. I made I made you laugh mid sentence. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I thought that avatar? was. It. I couldn't. Res it was about AI. I couldn't resist, and the and it, it confused some people. People people haven't seen it before. It's quite funny. Of course, I, I would then, find. A lot of things funny right now. So, uh, but uh, I liked uh, Gord's um, the rapid fire punch through, and uh, he uh, it was. Um, I always like finding out new things that are going on. But uh, the way he covered religion and politics, um, and um, this um, and his choice around humans around the avatars was was interesting. Um, because the, the infusion of AI is just like, it's so, so, so broad now. And that's what was coming to mind as he's going through. It's like, wow, that's like, he's talking about one layer and there's another 10. And, uh, this, uh, literally it stops the world now. No, if AI broke, the world stopped. It stopped as if the internet broke. I don't know about that. I mean, I would, I would beg to differ at this point, AI, mm -hmm. AI is not so pervasive that people can't go back or can't remember how things used to be and find oh, other it's just not it, it would stop for wait, years like yeah wait energy. wait 10 years or, how, like, wait even just 10 years 
then maybe no, what you're no power to. plants, no military, like the world stops. Anyway, it's all right. Yeah, I, I it really is pervasive. It, uh, it really is. It really is. It's uh, it crawled. Uh, it seemed to crawl very slow, then all of a sudden very fast. Uh, but uh, but fascinating. And yeah, ten years from now, uh, there's no doubt that the curve is is quite higher. Uh, mm -hmm. When uh, we did that segment, and uh, Chuck brought up uh, digital twins, and ten years from now, it's like if I'm tired, I'm sending someone who pretty much. Looks like Rob Tyree nods when Paula says something and and responds pretty close to Rob Tyree. Well, then we we moved over to our fifth session with uh, um, Louise uh, Mowbray, who talked about the power of collective wisdom, and we all learn how to do check marks on Zoom. Um, the annotation. At least it, Who knew? eventually we did yeah no actually good point paul it just wasn't check marked it was like a, a full array of annotations um and so uh i've yeah, done no, sessions yeah. where you could do a collective work of art together using the annotations bar oh. yeah zoom I, is that getting... feature been there forever and i just no one ever it's been there it. for a while yeah yeah That's... yeah Hadn't seen it. No one, no one around me brought it up. But I've been using Teams a lot more in the last six months. But uh, nonetheless, it was a pleasant surprise. It seemed to be quite stable. And Paula, then you uh, you had our lunchtime session, at least in Eastern time zone um, yesterday. That's a pretty Dada. heavy lunch, I will say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know you uh, it, it was pretty heavy. I will have to yeah. say it's. Uh, I knew that this, the topic itself would be um, polemic, and that's why I set it up with the video ahead of time, so that there would be an, it would start off on an upbeat note, you know, the hooray for the resistance, um, but then like looking at then the aftermath of all of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, anything having to do with mental health sometimes tends to be on the the downbeat. So, but it's important. It's necessary because without it, we won't be able. Like, there's no contrast. It's like you know, looking at the I think I've made this metaphor before. Looking at the moon, if there's not enough light in, or or dark, you can't see the the contrast in the craters. You can't see the light and the shadow. So you know our lives are are made up of light and shadow. And um, looking at our mental health means peering at the dark spaces so that we can come back into the light. Wonderful. No, it's, I, uh, I was, uh, I'm uh, sad to say I didn't know it, uh, any of that history. I don't think of uh, El Salvador in the last five years of going through or being in a civil war. Uh, the newspapers have gotten a hold of me. Yeah, and well, Guatemala and Honduras. And, uh, illuminated. Yeah. Then at one o'clock, we uh, we pivoted to an interactive workshop uh, led by Julia uh, Clace Freeland, um, Bridging Divides by Challenging Beliefs and uh, bringing up um, how do we collaborate in a VUCA world? What were your, what were your impressions of that one? Uh, so the it's exponentiality of it. Especially. Good, good balance to the universe. It's like we programmed it. Yeah, I think we did. <laughs> um, then I think one of the all-star segments, just because I know how much work went into the background of it, mm -hmm. um, uh, Howard uh, organized something at two o'clock yesterday called the Omni Future Live. It was the live webcast, which, um, you know, uh, by the end of it, I mean, certainly there's some mechanics at the start of it, but um, the, the bigger message, I think, was, God, there was a lot of really smart people that produced, you know, out of a breakout. Sometimes you get people that don't necessarily summarize their breakouts as well. That that was probably our best breakout. Please come back to the group and summarize that we've ever done. I don't know if you guys had uh, popular thoughts. We had Steve Wells as the uh, the person that played the uh, the starring role as as the breakouts went away. Yeah, I uh, he's a fantastic uh, presenter. Um, I've been in a couple of sessions with him and uh, really threaded things together. Really informative, and then I love. Anytime there's real time sense making and summaries like that, uh, I'm thrilled by it. I caught right. the um, video afterwards, um, and uh, it was uh, it was really quite well. Uh, apart from any, you know, the the fact that we needed to to redo the the rooms a bit, um, 
the uh, the methodology afterwards, you know, if you had to replicate it, it would have been spot on. There's a lot of good ideas that came out of that. Um, and I like the synthesis of it at the end. Yeah, like really get both in terms of uh, just the people that gave the synthesis, but also the 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 two by two graphic that he had at the end that mm -hmm. pulled it all together. Mm -hmm. Three o'clock, uh, uh, near and dear to my heart, so the project that I've been working on with Gita, uh, Future Proof, Future Gazing for Teens. Um, it was a really good session in terms of just to, for our own team's sake, if, if not for everybody else's, just galvanizing people around our mission and just um, kind of some takes in terms of where that one was going. So um, I know I, I saw some messages on the back end that people were excited about uh, it, it being out to the world now. So, um, and yeah, I, I think what we said was true. We have a lot of passion for um, what, what's going on there. Universal the base. Oh, we, sorry. Uh, I left the lens uh, and looking uh, at the, I know Gita doesn't like using uh, the term kids, <laughs> young adults. Um, and uh, this people are great. And uh, what a panel, just like nice balance. Joelle's a star. Um, super articulate and clear and uh, really uh, on her game in, in summarizing and presenting at the same time. Um, really well done. I kind of felt like I was at Hogwarts with the one American <laughs> wizard. What is that? Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. And then four o'clock, we talked about uh, like a really, I found the whole idea of universal basic income. I, I've, I think about this a lot. Uh, and so I'm glad we had our common friend, uh, Jennifer Evans, uh, talk about that. Um, she had some really good, she was really good on the answers. I found uh, we, we gave her a couple of tough questions and she was really good at uh, serving some stuff back up to us. Um, yeah. Well, she's the first presenter we've ever had, Sean, that uh, tried to do it from an Apple phone. It's a very interesting uh, approach. Um, but uh, we sort of soldiered through that. But uh, the, the depth of the, the, uh, the change, uh, I think, like post-pandemic, pre-pandemic, UBI, I think, was like a really positive sort of thinking exercise. It's kind of like, in Canada at least, uh, rep uh, proportional representations like voting. Is it, is it an experimental? Can we do it or not? But uh, post-pandemic, uh, given what's happened in the, in the world with uh, the experiments that did go on, uh, it's near, it's near, near. But she's a pro. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, there's, there's always a little bit of a, 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 a grab bag of everything uh, on our day of the swans to this year was no different. Um, mm -hmm. We had uh, Mitchell lead us on sprints and the speed of change is even faster and just the disruption of the whole consulting game. It's certainly um, something I've lived with for a while now with Mitchell. Just, uh, I think we've got a really good command now in terms of just what's wrong and, and how we might be able to provide a solution. So I'm as much happy about the segment as I was the thinking that went into it that's going to hopefully lead to a uh, Cygnus Sprints uh, business that uh, will flourish. I have a 12th uh, aspect for you, by the way. There are, um, there are no, uh, most consultants, you were asking about the, the aspects of yep, you know, yep. why consultants sees weren't working. I had thought about it afterwards and, and in, your, in your 11 that you, that you posited, you never once indicated most consultants don't look at future foresight techniques to be able to provide solutions. And uh, that's, that's the modus that operandi of this group, right? That is an oversight. You're right. I don't think we... Uh, but it's yeah, something that I've been thinking about as well, because in a lot of other consultancies that I've noticed, none of them bring forward the notion of part of their offerings is uh, specifically looking, doing an analysis with foresight tools into how to resolve the situation. And so that's something that is, is uh, a, a new offering. There are a lot of people talking about it just in itself as a consultancy of its own, but not in conjunction with other SME type consultancies. That is a very, very good point. We might have just turned our uh, magnificent 11 into uh, the dirty dozen uh, in terms of reasons on that post. Uh, that's right. I don't a delightful dozen. 
we did not you know, okay much better much better I was, I was thinking bad movie titles there um really good pick up there and thanks for calling the 11 too i was like oh yeah we did do that didn't we yeah um six o'clock uh we got into the, our dinner game we got into uh, and we made gourd say a bad word um we had lauren present the uh, spectrum of assholes and uh, just kind of the five different types of um people you don't want to spend too much time with in your life and coping strategies any thoughts on that one uh rob because i think you uh yeah. you were kind of the interviewee yeah, it's a that's super interesting uh, set of uh, hypotheses that she's been developing and thinking in in different ways. She's got a different angle at uh, at uh, um, balancing uh, sort of tough discussions. Uh, her sincere concern, uh, the high degree of empathy, is uh, is valuable to analysis. And then if you if you look at the counterbalance with what Giada did. Like we're talking about, are, are those the people? Did, did anyone recognize them that were that have been uh, was oligarchs in El Salvador? So there's a balance point there that was interesting, um, but fascinating topic. I, I, we uh, in going from like these dimensions of inner space to outer space that we did. There's another balance point going forward as we dipped into the metaverse and outer space. So we spent a whole hour in our, in minds and thinking about how minds interact. Yeah. Blame our mirror on your own. Mm. <laughs> and some who don't want to be mirrored. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and, and the, the one fleeting thing after Lauren's thing is, uh, you know, almost like a, it's like she mentioned it, the spectrum, right? Like, uh, are there just people that are on the good side of that and the bad side of that? I, I always, I wanted to ask her the question, the people, like, do we just give up on the people that are on the cusp of being these bad people, but could be saved? Maybe I'm not too sure. Can we save people from being, um, you know, assholes? I'm not too sure. Um, you know, I have, I have some thoughts about that. In fact, having, having encountered quite a few in my life. Um, yeah, let's go, go. What's, uh, can, can uh, they be I saved? Would say, yeah, I would say that, uh, sometimes that's innate, it's biological, but sometimes it's learned. Um, and so if you learn the patterns of how to get what you want by emulating behaviors that will get what you want without thinking about other people's feelings, then those, those are learned behaviors that can be unlearned. It's like, you know, it's like smoking. Where, where do you draw the line between the um, biological aspect of you being prone to be having addictive personality, and then your learned behavior of drink, of smoking a, a cigar on a regular or a um, cigarette or whatever ha habit, habit on a regular basis and, and I, I deciding to quit or not deciding to quit or deciding to change your life, change your behaviors. So, you know, there is this balance between nature and nurture and the balance between biological and uh, epigenetic, you know, and I think that there, there is some redemption for some of those um, a-holes, um, but uh, not all of them are redeemable. I think depend it how you are able to um, establish a relationship with them despite their the way in which they engage with you and engage with others. Um, sometimes it's, it's deep and profound and sometimes it has to be superficial. Well, that's good. That leaves me with a more hopeful take from that one. Uh, I just, uh, you know, the, I mean, there, I think it was Gregory that pretty much had his uh, work mm -hmm. story that said, ah, you got to give up on all these people and just stay the hell away. So um, yeah. I've had those why... situations too. There are well, people I don't know who, why I was thinking, who will do that. In this discussion, I don't know why Ben Affleck's name came to mind. Like, <laughs> you were such a horrible person to Jennifer Garner. Are you going to be better with Jennifer Lopez this time? I don't know. You mean the second time around? It were third, yeah, I guess. Yeah, second with Jennifer. I don't know how many other, like fourth, fifth. I don't know how many wives. You must have a there. predilection for Jennifer. <laughs> I have an the interesting monogram story. Monogram simple. Friend. Yeah. Just be worried if you're Jennifer Gray somewhere in the world, you should be worried, Jennifer Gray. Um, <laughs> 
Then at seven o'clock, we had um, Scott Fair's um, really interesting story. We do one of these or two of these mm -hmm. every year. I loved hearing about just his two years of COVID and building out a unique antique business model business with his uh, his partner. Um, I don't know what your takeaway was, uh, either of you. It's a, a, a treasure of a treasure story. And then unfolded like an onion and... Uh, and no surprise really on my side, but uh, just a, a great, a great adventure and uh, super modern. Like it's uh, almost like a different form of science fiction, very social science fiction, except he's, they're working in the real that way. And all, and all the way through slightly amused. <laughs> you know what I think? You know, I always think, oh, sorry, Paula. I was just going to say, Scott, I, I, um, got up got um got on the call specifically because i wanted to listen to your to your experience um i thought that uh the creativity that you showed and the ingenuity that you showed in recognizing an opportunity and then leveraging it to include other people for other op business opportunities as well as you know looking at it as, as a multiple um multiple business strategy for yourself and for, for your partner um, I, you know, really smart and, uh, and who would have thought, you know, a, um, an old bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Every time I think about Scott and there's various people in our, our guild, I just think there's hope for America. I mean, we can say that as three Canadians, right? Like mm -hmm. just, uh, you, you have a hundred million people like Scott in, uh, America. That, that's a pretty good looking country of the future. So. Mm -hmm. Hope for the world, really. I mean, when you look at new technologies and how you can leverage them and mm -hmm. the fact that you're able to put them all into one space um, or have that be your space, I guess that was the, the in, incipient notion behind the, the co-working spaces, um, but for, you know, with multiple other people, as opposed to you yourself having multiple businesses in, in one space and then, um, but that the, the U-Haul one was, was uh, an eye-opener. Thanks for that mm -hmm. tip. Yeah, I know very much. I think that was an eye opener for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. We moved to Space for All and the Democratization of Space with Fernando Gutierrez. And uh, my Lord, um, talk about a command on a subject, right? Oh, yeah. um, he's, a, he's a futurist by trade with just an extreme passion for space, but he does other things. But on that subject, just, um, just uh, you know, both his presentation and the way he answered questions, just... Mm -hmm. A complete command on the subject. Good to in the world. And uh, you said it earlier today, Sean, uh, it was great to be exposed to what's going on in South America and in Africa, uh, how globalized the, the, uh, the new space race has become. And uh, it's evolving so rapidly. It's, uh, every step is, is just amazing. And then he, you say he's uh, he's got this really great tone. He's, he's uh, I look forward to the books he will write. Yeah, you know what? That's very true. Um, mm -hmm. He's he he gives you the goods, but he gives it with a just a, a just a really smart and the, the internalization engine of his brain is just a really smart uh, smart flywheel in there. Like one of the companies should be grabbing a, has a spokesman. Uh, or evangelist, or or just a futurist. Is uh, what better place to work? I'll get on. I'll get on that. Uh, yeah, priority number 20, <laughs> 29. Please do. And then at nine o'clock, we had uh, your buddy from Arcade VR, Brandon McNaughton. He talked about uh, there's not a metaverse. There will be only one metaverse. But it was really for me the the power of it was just going through and seeing demonstrations of different mm -hmm. environments that he either ha already has or wants to have in the future like he uh god like um to have that artist skill set and then to combine it with a uh, a real curiosity around the technology and and business is a yeah he's got he's got a real strong venn diagram of skills for sure and my uh torah uh, like uh, he's a a real like I've met few few pure CEO types in my career, and he's one of them. It's just he's got a vision, and he tries to get that vision done, and he's relentless and intense. And then he's got this uh, great new kind of overlap between fine art, a modern world, uh, electronic sensibility, 
and he attracts talent around him pretty instantaneously. He's very engaging, very knowledgeable. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to see it expand rapidly. Um, and uh, and it, it's very different, very different than other businesses that I've been involved in. But uh, he's got a lot of uh, future ideas. I, I'm hoping we can raise a whole bunch of money so that his ideas keep coming true. That'd be great. Yeah. Good things happen to good people. Mm-hmm. Um, we got into, uh, you know, we get into the late night hour and it gets a little bit more casual like we did last year. And uh, mm-hmm. this was a great segment. Uh, Rob, you served up a conversation with your son, Jacob, and uh, he delivered the goods. Uh, we learned, uh, Paula, I'm not too sure if you're part of it, but we learned a little bit about Rob. In fact, he leaves coffee cups everywhere and a whole bunch of things like that. Uh, but it was... I found I missed, it. Uh, I missed that. I would. I'm looking forward to the video. <laughs> it's a, 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 all of Rob's I, secrets I, revealed. A, a millennial living in Toronto, Jacob's eye view is a as a unique eye view. No, I I just uh, uh it's just uh, I mentioned to Rob off mm-hmm. camera that it was just really nice that Rob could share a bit of his life with us and uh and I got a kick out of Jacob. I, I look forward to seeing him in real life one day. I'll have to drag him out to a few events. It's like, yeah. he, I, I have before. It's, and he's like, what are you doing? Why? <laughs> maybe maybe now, uh-huh. if he gets a chance to perform a bit, <laughs> he'll get involved. We need more Yeah, I, I think thing. he definitely, he definitely thinks Lauren's like the most interesting person amongst us. So, uh, and she probably is, so. Um. <laughs> 11 o'clock, I, uh, I imitated Venus Flytrap um, and did my late night DJ. I uh, canvassed three or four of us to come up with 25 ideas to improve the world. And beyond the ideas that I'll surface on, um, on Medium and then hopefully get some, some other members of the guild to look at. Maybe, maybe there's something in there, but I just, I found it really interesting how people arrive to great ideas. Like there was four or five of us and we all, we all had our own process to... Um, to try to come up with something good and maybe out top the other person. So uh, Rob, you were part of that. You came up with a few, few really good ideas. It was fun. The, the big basic things, it was neat to see that we all sort of floated around a bit of AI, a bit of robotics, and then some really basics like food, housework. <laughs> and the, the construct was neat, Paula. It was, uh, it surprised me. I thought Sean was going to play music and, and, wax poetically about silly things like Venus uh-huh. perhaps did uh, but um, but it was uh, it was fun to see us riffing off each other and uh, and uh, some of the things uh, that didn't hit the list of a good invention five or six years out were just because they exist and that's like oh that that exists you just say go look at this um, but a lot of fun what was your favorite one Sean yeah, we had a few food ideas and when Jill started into, you know, how do we much like, you know, you you landed on it too, right? Like we we serve up things through technology saying, how do we produce a drug that will cure this? Well, we touched on it the other day in one of our craft building sessions where it's like, I want to eat a, an apple that tastes like a strawberry. Like, why can't that happen? Like we we um you know, as much as we can add spices and different ingredients to our food, we're at a stage right now where we can actually change the food itself, I think. So, um, so yeah, there was some interesting stuff around that. From an industrial perspective, where it was it's business based to a personal choice perspective, where you can, you know, elect a menu off your, your smartphone or, or whatever interface you're using that I thought that was kind of cool. I caught the the video afterwards, actually. Um, I like the, uh, the, Skin for the mind. That was kind of cool. That was an interesting <laughs> one that she uh, that she posited. So that interface. Oh, yeah. um, and then, uh, you know, Lauren taking the light route. That's uh, created an engine that's perfect. The truth and reconciliation engine. I, I saw happens. that too. I thought that was cool. I, I but you know, like that could be a truth or truth or dare type of thing for anyone. Maybe that will. Um, allow for mental health services to then be more pervasive where people mm-hmm. have the option of not just, you know, um, confronting what they've done, but also um, meeting with someone who's had a similar experience and then mm-hmm. debriefing. Like, I, I see that the, the potential for debriefing services, 
debriefing um, options for mental health. That, that can be a real thing. Yeah. Great idea. So I think that uh, exercises like that are, uh, are like mental gymnastics, like pure gets all the lobes going. And then especially with it's a group of people that are used to uh, telling stories, really neat things happen really quickly. And then the lens you put on it, of focusing it down, like, okay, it's got like two sentences and like get it down like shorter so that, oh yeah. And then you could see everyone in that uh, group was very visual. You could see that, oh yeah, I can see that now, next. Very good exercise, Sean. Well, I mean, it's, it was good. It was good we did it as a smaller group too, because I think larger group, you we would definitely come up with 25 ideas, but it would be a little bit more staccato. I think we, mm -hmm. we got into building a little bit on each other's ideas, which is a, kind of in the spirit of the guild. You could so do that. We, you could replicate that experience on a regular basis, call, call it the night of the swan. Mm. And, oh, man. You know, late, late night DJ, as people are sort of ruminating in their thoughts and um, you know, coming up with all sorts of ideas that they've thought about through the day, that that could be a you know a night experience to do that. Hey, Scott. Good morning, Good morning. everybody. I didn't want to interrupt you, so. No problem. How, how are you guys holding up? We're here. I got <laughs> my sleep. So. We just we just complimented you a minute ago, Scott, and there you are. There you go. Yeah, well, I figured I'd show like up this to... morning. Even a little bed head and. I heard you guys would be might be a little worse for wears too after this. So. I've got the same thing. My hair is sticking up all over the place, Scott. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Paul, Paula just came up with the idea, the night of the swan, which a great name, b great <laughs> idea. Paula, I can't even think of one of these events for like. Give me a week, okay? Give me a week. Hey, a week you know what? Talk. If you're down for it, I'm a night owl. I have a tendency to not be a be. A, if you if you want to do a late night radio show like that, I'm up for that. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, we're I'm a late night owl too. I think a lot of us are. Um, so Scott, we're just uh, going through the last few things that we did. Uh, please, please join us because we, we we're going to talk about casting ahead as well too. Uh, if you if you got a chance, um, midnight we talked about experimentation and the power of doing. I thought we would probably have a drop off, and then we had good infection of energy from Gordon and Nathan and um, and uh, Chuck and a few other people and um yeah there's some core questions around you know what is experimentation which is really kind of uh first principles i guess um but we got into some of the um some of the uh the nitty-gritty of experimentation how it's done selectively well and not well by industries and by different types of organizations uh, i enjoyed it uh, we talked about digital twins and that again i think so uh that came up and then we, uh, you know, the, the, the lie of all of this was we, we did record a session uh, back in January called Fahrenheit 4.51 about the climate change. We re-aired that one during the one o'clock segment. And then really strong speaker, Umran, uh, who was on our agenda last year, talking about diversity and inclusion. She just, um, she's very confident, Rob, right? Mm -hmm. A real global citizen. And then uh, that long tour, uh, that she had at uh, PepsiCo and now uh, in consulting. I didn't know she had written a book. Uh, so that was a, a very nice surprise that uh, she's wrote a book on uh, leadership, Scott and uh, Paula. And uh, she briefed us on that, but uh, just started drilling in on, on, on leadership and how leaders should and will include inclusion in uh, their everyday aspects and a good uh, round table discussion as well, a good conversation. And again, you ask uh, Umra a, a, a decent question and you get another chapter to the book. It's really, really, really articulate and clear and thoughtful. Very caring person. It's amazing. An author that delivers an hour of a presentation doesn't mention their book. It, uh, it's, it's, that doesn't happen often. So uh, she, she stayed on content, uh, mm -hmm. which is great. Definitely is she great. Turkish? Yes. Okay, you know, I, I thought so. Her name definitely looked Turkish, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of great, you know, thought leaders coming out of Turkey mm -hmm. recently. I've, I've just noticed every every other person that I, I find, like even even artists, like look, look at Refik Dial. Have you have you seen his AI inspired art? Just astounding. But uh, a lot of the thought leaders that I that I've come across recently, 
they're Turkish uh, designers, mm. artists, thought leaders, business people, but who have like turnkey ideas. Just really, really cool. So uh, keep them coming. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to listening to her video. It's really good. It's tight, tight, clear messaging. Like very, both of the two and the three o'clock sessions, really strong presentations, both aesthetically and um, and command of. Uh, we had uh, Sonia Blino from uh, South Africa talk about complexity. And I find most complexity thinkers uh, and sense makers in general, great at their skill, not great at communicating it to others in a simple way that you go, yeah, I could use that in my company or organization. Probably the best I've heard, and I've heard a lot. So, um, so really good compliments to Sonia. And that, Thank you, know. you to uh, Louise Mowbray, who recruited Sonia. Uh, I, I didn't uh, do enough uh, backstory on her. She had uh, written one of the chapters in the Kinefin book. Uh, so uh, her strength of authority on the subject is high. And her desire to communicate it clearly and design uh, the com- complete ideas uh, is just incredible. Like uh, that is a solid analyst and a solid communicator to delight to, uh, to learn from. We went long on that one. So we didn't actually air it, but uh, we'll post the video. Just the, the decryptifying crypto was probably one of our better ateliers we did because we did bring in six different experts. So, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll mention that for the tape. Then um, I interviewed Akash uh, about our launch of uh, Radar Collection, Akash from India, uh, and how we're going to go about surfacing insights that we'll produce in a set of reports that you can either buy as one-offs or as subscriptions. And just um, super smart guy, um, gets things really quickly, and I'm looking forward to um, working with him on uh, producing a few reports that we will um, commercially sell to different interested businesses. And I, I think it'll work in good combination with the guild. Uh, we just finished uh, 6 a.m. Uh, this morning, Disruptive Australia. Uh, we had, um, you know, Australians Wendy talk Elford. about uh, Wendy Elford and Vikash. Um, there's a couple of other people that, that lurked in, but those were the two main speakers in they, you know, they come from two different aspects that they're really good together in terms of just talking about how Australia is going to uh, change given an election that they just had. And the fact that they're straddling this east and west of the world, and having a whole bunch of very unique things associated with Australia, because it's, it's its own thing. I mean, it's the only, is it the only country that it's, 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 it's on its own continent? Like, is that a true statement? I'm not too sure. Yeah, I think so. Island continent. And we're having well, this. Apart from Antarctica, which now which belongs to many nations. Yes, right. Uh, that the would opposite be is true there. I have never used, uh, I don't even think in the game of risk, can you own uh, Antarctica? I don't even think you can, so. Uh, they're just uh, stations, you know, they're, but they're divvied up, uh, among different the different nations, so. You look on a map of Antarctica, then you'll see lines that correspond to UK, Australia, and other places. You know. Agreed. Agreed. And um, yeah, I'll go off that point. We're having this session now, so this is our twenty fifth session. We've come back to now, so we've casted back on the the day of the swan that was. Um, maybe a, a couple minutes of thoughts in terms of what what would you love to see next year? This is so fresh that. We might as well capture it for posterity and, and maybe action. Um, anybody, just what are what are ideas for either segments or formats or you know, different things we could do for next year? How about cutting edge technology? Like what, what's on the radar for what's upcoming? I keep seeing Pascal Bornet's uh, LinkedIn post about all the weird and wacky things that he comes across. And... I'm thinking there's a whole lot more that, that can be done in terms of new materials and um, you know new thought processes as well as just new ideas or adventures um, happening on the intersection of you know uh, quantum science um, and psychology and neuro- neuroscience. I, I think we could we could do more along those lines. I like it. I agree. What do you think, Scott? 
I don't know. My 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 thought uh, box is not uh, my rat's not not spinning too well. But I, I mean, I love I love the diversity. So mm -hmm. I caught well, I caught quite a bit of yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, last night we had I had to go last night. I really wanted to hear the astronomy one. I caught part of that, but uh, I like keeping those in there, obviously. Mm -hmm. so I'm a space uh, space cadet. <laughs> I think uh, in the uh, if I compare it to uh, the other Swan One, we had uh, because of the timing, uh, we had a lot more focus on health. So I probably want to bring a stream back in that uh, was that sort of macro micro view in in health and see where we got to. That that would be something I would toss on the table. Um, I do in uh, and this this is a riff on the whole year. We started the guild really honing in on sense making as a, as a tool and approach to, uh, to thinking about things and developing points of view. And then uh, as we started rotating around that, the thinking turned to our futures. So this theme of sense making futures thinking, that balance um, generates, basically that's the idea that generates an unconference. So the difference between last year and this year was uh, changing the theme to add futures thinking. So you end up with people talking about the future more than sense making. And uh, there's a balance there that I, I'm very attracted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, and it's great when they, they actually happen in the same segment too, right, Rob? Like where it's mm -hmm. not, there's not like this line or separated container, like our three o'clock session with Sonia, she, she recognized Sense making has to have a, a leg in the future as well. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Scott, you were going to say something. Um, no, I was just agreeing basically that, yeah, I, I kind of would like to do more of that, more sense making and, and future thinking. You know, the uh, the Omni uh, uh, Howard's um, segment, you know, that was very interesting. I really enjoyed that. That was huge and great reading with it too. Um, that kind of stuff. Uh, that I would like to see a little bit more of that personally, uh, or maybe maybe even something more interactive. Maybe we can get the guild together for a session and do uh, you know do a deep dive on on a particular subject. If that makes any sense, we can deep dive. We could deep dive for hours, though. So. How how will we pick the subject? What are you thinking? Would it be someone's personal passion, or or a, a lottery <laughs> ticket, or a Pick a, a note of a barrel. Pick one of the 14 sustainable goals of the UN. What are you thinking? Maybe take a current event a year mm. from now mm. and or a, a series of current events a year from now. And then um, and then we can we could basically just take a straw poll amongst, you know, maybe all of the people that are uh, signed up or even um, even the, the people that would participate. That's great. I like it. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, uh, we're uh, the guild uh, candidly is a little bit in transition in terms of moving from strictly a community into something that we launch ventures from. You have all seen new faces come in. Uh, I think, Scott, I don't know how long we've been working together. Maybe were you at the last day of this one? I'm not too sure. Yeah, I think it's you a little, um, it's over a year. I'd have to go back into. Uh, clubhouse to figure out when i first uh found you guys march 25th was, was clubhouse when it when was it march 25th there's a there's a i think it was, wasn't it april 15th it. rob march 15th april 15th april 15th clubhouse uh clubhouse we did uh day of the swan in april mm -hmm. april so, oh sorry yeah 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 because yeah, i remember day of the swan so yeah and then, Paula, how long have you been with us? Uh, Just since November. So it's, I, I think, you know, I think the reasons why people joined us at the start of the pandemic and wanted to uh, be involved and the reason why people join us now and, and arguably our highest growth era is, are probably a little bit different. And so uh, I think myself and Rob have had some chats in terms of just recognizing and, and really, um, you know, um, putting the people that put uh, put in the time, um, bring them to the fore of our guild and, and give them suitable credit for that is gonna be one thing, I think. Um, 
I, I guarantee we'll probably do something in the metaverse next year. We'll actually do a mm-hmm. segment and the metaverse will go away from zoom or whatever we're using. Mm-hmm. We also, who knows, like by next year, we might all be traveling and, and we might do this in a city where we, we meet some of our people uh, mm-hmm. in a live segment. That would be fun. So and, here's a uh, question, the metaverse. Mm-hmm. How, how do I get step into the metaverse? Is there, <laughs> you're, I mean, well, I know, I, I, I know in some definitions you are right now. Oh, so I am in the metaverse right now. On some, def- it depends on how you define it. So mm-hmm. what are you thinking of uh, your idea of the metaverse? And maybe that'll help. How do I, and maybe this could be a full segment. We might even be able to do a, uh, another, you know, show on this, but I would like to explore the metaverse, but I basically don't have a clue how to do it. I know I need to buy mm. a headset, and but do I go in through you know um, uh, war war uh, it Warcraft or do you go through in through Facebook? Do you go in through? Uh, there's another company on my phone down here. I'm actually watching its stock, but there's several metaverses that are already there. But but how do you like literally walk in the door? I want because say I want to go buy a piece of property, which I don't right now because I've been reading about that and they're 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 uh they're um a retailer they're they're uh um property markets crashing so in places so that'd be one and it's more rhetorical but at the same time I, yeah. I'm serious about wanting to learn how to actually step into this world and understand it better because I know there's opportunity there for yeah. you know, everyone's future including mine. You're in Florida, right? Uh, uh, Illinois. I'm south oh, of Illinois. Chicago. Sorry, for some reason I thought you were in Florida. Oh, that's okay. I'm There's south of Chicago. There's lots of in Florida with your name on it if you want it. Nice. I like Florida. So, yeah, we go to get down there. Where are, you, are you down in Florida? No, no, no. I'm I'm in uh, not uh, not that far from where Sean and Rob are in Toronto. I'm in Florida. Oh, yeah. You're up in Canada, Canada. too. Canada. We're the three Canadians. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I've got a lot of Canadian friends. I learned uh, when I moved to Detroit, I ended up uh, with a lot of Canadian friends, and uh, definitely that was uh, I was able to to enjoy that. Oh, U-Haul! Did, did you guys realize that U-Haul is a U.S. Canadian company? Yeah, I didn't know that. Well, it's, uh, I know the brand is here. Mm-hmm. I forgot to mention that because I get plates. I get trucks with Canadian plates on them. Mm. Or, or do there our trucks that your our trucks have dual citizenship mm-hmm. that way? Don't do it. Don't they paint the side of their trucks, um, Scott? With, like state historical like, things. Do you ever see yeah. like a Northwest Territories picture on some of the trucks that make it down there? Yeah, I've had the Northwest Territory uh, truck. There's a lot of uh, different trucks that they, uh, oh. uh, things that they paint of interest on the sides of the trucks. Yeah. So you know, right I now, the, just... the Web3 world of the metaverse, my opinion is... Uh, Keep an eye on where the game companies are going or anyone that's buying a lot of game companies. So the brands that are acquiring uh, technology sound like Microsoft, Facebook, um, Epic are top three, whatever NVIDIA does. Uh, Mm -hmm. So that's the GPU chip on your, uh, because it's 3D world, uh, that type of chip ends up in a lot of things. So they've got a layer of the metaverse as building blocks. But the bets on games, right? The gaming technology is now being applied to business and that gets you that 3D immersive feel. Mm -hmm. Uh, Microsoft uh, is the leader on AR, which is augmented reality. So it's still goggles and then adding extra features to your visual plane. You're not, it's not immersive. It's it's, uh, inventive, I call it. So it invents uh, a... fake reality or adjusted reality in front of you through your lenses. So it's part of the world that you see. Mm-hmm. I first tried that about four years ago. I was in TELUS's, TELUS is a Canadian telecommunications company in their R&D lab. Hey, Lauren. And uh, I tried the, the HoloLens technology and it was this game of just stacking blocks. And I'm like, you know, science Rob's like, well, this is so fun. I'm like a kid in a Y ideal. I've got the goggles on. And I'm stacking these blocks. And as I'm stacking them, I turn it, I'm laughing because I'm it's delightful. So as soon as the, my delightful gears click, mm-hmm. I know something's gonna happen in the future. So I turn to the, the real scientist and I, I say, well, how did you guys figure out the haptic click? And he laughs, right? So Rob, there are no haptics in this. That's your brain. 
Your brain is <laughs> stacking blocks. It feels like you're stacking blocks. That's awesome. That's it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that was uh, four years ago now. Four, four years ago. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so that, that's, uh, that's Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft is pretty uh, pretty generous about publishing what's in their labs. You just mm -hmm. search Microsoft YouTube, you'll end up with a scientist, and uh, it, usually they'll have a, a science fiction writer, and they interview each other and they talk about technology. But those, uh, you know, the Oculus headset that, that uh, Brandon's company uses, ArcGVR, that's uh, fully immersive. Put the goggles on your head. It's the highest performing unit. That uh, the unit costs two hundred bucks ish. So it's not expensive. And then it's a full yeah. platform. And so you get on there, it's a, if, if you imagine this computer, the computer you're using now as a platform that does multiple things, it's got an economy mm -hmm. of scope. Oculus is like that. It's got a way of moving around. It's got handles. You actually, you don't, they don't even use handles anymore. They just, they scan your hands and your hands are in the reality with you. Right. And once you try it, like it does suck you in. Um, mm -hmm. I can't use it very long. It tires me out more than two hours. It's, it's so much signal. And then you do, once you get disconnected from where you are, you know, if you're in a room and it's mm -hmm. got, not got a wire, there's no connection to a computer. So you just got the headset on. You play a game uh, like from Industrial Light Magic has a couple of games and uh, you're just in game. You're, you're the character or in the game and you don't know where you are. When you when you're work, walking around in your house, so you draw this environment, mm -hmm. and then you're in the hollow deck. Wow, that's not realistic. It's cartoony. Um, oh yeah, but uh, you're in it. You're in it, and you're in the character. And if you've got to draw a bow, you're drawing a bow. I know. I do a little bit of martial arts, and there there's martial arts games where you're boxing, and at the end of a boxing round, it feels like you're boxing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's probably like um, and that that's exciting and then even like cheap adrenaline is available like you uh you'll just watch a big video that's in full vr it's a 360 vr and it'll be mm -hmm. just a uh, hang gliding or on a on a roller coaster and you can't stop the adrenaline you can't there's too much signal coming in now it's right. unusual it's got side effects mm-hmm I'm sure uh, one that's clear to gives people nausea. Some people skip because you're disconnected and uh, a vertical feel. It's probably why I can't stay in there too long. But uh, when you're engaged with other people, that's the killer app to me. It's the killer app. Mm -hmm. Like this chat is chat. VR chat is one level like beyond. And then one of the special things that uh, Oculus, the meta company did was that they've got the audit the uh, sound really well designed so that when you're walking around in VR and you're close to someone, you hear them and you talk, when you go further back from them, you get ambient sound around and mm -hmm. it engages you not just with your eyes, but with your ears. Right. And that's extra stimulation and it's underrated. People don't talk about it very much. They don't write about it very much because they're not very good writers as far as I'm concerned, but because there's a huge amount of science. Oh yeah. Like you can walk beside someone in the gallery. You can whisper to them beside you in this VR space. So, so, so Oculus from Meta, mm -hmm. good start. And then keep an eye on Epic because Epic owns Fortnite. Fortnite right. is a cash machine. Yeah, it is. $4 billion a year of cash. Oh, yeah. That company doesn't know what to spend the money on. And, uh, you know, instead of going to, uh, you know, a, a formal meeting like Zoom, like watch what Zoom does, mm -hmm. we should do a session in Fortnite. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. It's can we all get into, you know, can we all get into a room together? I mean, I'm looking forward to the like the virtual office, um, but you know, I'm about to go. But one one interesting point that I want to make uh, back in 1998, I was at the, uh, uh, the mall in St. Louis and there was this literally this this um, it looked like a gaming place you would walk into, but they had these chairs and they had these headsets and it was literally the metaverse and what everybody's talking about today it was blocky but it wasn't that blocky and it was mm -hmm. almost up to date with uh, that that uh, era's games i've gamed since i was since um my commodore 64 so that shows you how back how far back i go i'm a dos guy so yeah. but um i'm surprised that the technology is not any 
um, further along than it actually is because after it was already where kind of where it is now then so what happened rhetorically is it so yeah. my mind always wonders what what happened did why didn't why didn't that take off and become you know quote unquote unintended reality right I've got the uh, exact I, I same impression in... Scott like second life was there 20 years ago right like uh well I went back I think a, more I, thing I, yeah no well I just think sometimes ideas find their own time like there was less things attached to second life right you had to be in there and it was all about second life there was no social media there was no paying for things there was no functionality yeah. and so it was just you mm -hmm kind of acting as a stick person with other people i think people get bored of that eventually so uh but um yeah i i, I agree the challenges that brendan was bringing up about look we we want to build this stuff the the platforms that are there they're not good enough yet for us to build them was was oddly uh out of focus for a 2022 uh mindset and the hardware hardware software stuff swings too like the um the gaming platforms were in advance of the PCs. Now PCs are in advance and the chipping chips that you can get now in general, just the platforms are better. Uh, anything to do with computing that whatever is famous 20 years from now, Scott exists. Yes. It's not economic, but it's in the military lab or it's in someone's private mm -hmm. lab somewhere. And it really does exist. And if you happen to see it and that you're minus 20 and you're like, oh yeah, I saw that. Just like my story i saw it already like i went to uh i was invited to the hp labs the pure r d labs these are white coat hp people wow and i met one of the the there's three scientists that invented the dot the jet dot printing mm -hmm. so the, they actually invented the, the inkjet the ink. dot technology yeah. yeah inkjet thank you paula tired um so the, the, one of them in the guy's the, name Hewlett and the other guy's name Packard. Well, they have they <laughs> the have, garage was in a real thing. I was in there. They have they kept their office. It's I was in there in connecting offices. They have the same Art Deco place. They still they bought the house where the garage is. They have a replica of the garage. It's all on the same campus. <laughs> but I'm inside this place and they're showing us stuff. Again, this is like five years ago now. They're showing us stuff like right. It's the stuff. So they had the patents for the ink, which part of the art of that ink is it's small mm -hmm. and it sticks to paper. The other part is like getting it to go the right direction. Oof, got to land somewhere. And then uh, the, the uh, actual nozzle is very special too. It's very small and it doesn't gum up it's and it's manufacturable. So I met one of the fellows and it, he did that 20 years ago. And that is in everything. That technology is in everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the Pepsi cans, no, it's only Coke, Coke cans where you see your name on it. Mm -hmm. HP's got the only printers in the world that can cost effectively put names printed on aluminum. No one else knows how to do it. I would have never guessed that. I would have lost a bet on that. I, it's just, I didn't know either. And it's, it's, they have stuff that they're not allowed selling. So their inkjet technology is so advanced now. They've got a 3D version of an inkjet printer oh, that's that cool. every one of their machines has to be licensed because it can print art that is indistinguishable mm -hmm. from fine art. Oh. They're, they and they're, do the same thing for cars. Uh, for, for personalizing cars. They do that the same was, thing uh, for banners as large as, as con. They do the same thing for uh, doing textile printing to walls. Yep, HP has has the patent on, on a lot of the printing they, they, they've done, not only 3D printing, but also 2D printing on surfaces of yeah, any sort. Well, uh, corrugated, uh, corrugated surfaces, they have it. The first, what you want, the they have first. it for all manufacturing. Nice. They were printing, they had a lab that was already production. They, were, they showed us the, the low volume printing. Uh, Scott, you're you know more about this than I do. Mm -hmm. uh, for uh, BMW is their first client. So they had some models of BMW that they had already designed in carbon fiber parts. And yeah. they were, they weren't for, they were production level 
machines and they showed us those those were production because anyone seen the picture of africa behind me usually it's behind me on my screen um this uh, this is a a production printer they showed us but i uh, didn't realize they existed um but this this that picture of africa mm -hmm. i got at the lab the reason it's up there is just to remind me I got it there and I also want to go to Africa. But that is a high quality poster and it prints at 10 kilometers an hour. I do that conversion rate, but that's pretty fast. Six miles an hour. Yeah. So when you see a full poster size, three feet of paper come out of a printer, mm -hmm. it looks like science fiction it spits out it just wow and so we, we get there and what he, he we get there and there's eight of us touring the factory and he, he's smiling right so he presses a button and starts printing and it's printing stuff you get in a poster store beautiful high density magazine quality wow and he's like what map do you want on africa america and that was just production stuff. They showed us the first type of uh, 3D printing where they were they designed, it was a mix of software and hardware, where it was multi-part objects. Yes. So uh, this is, again, five years ago, they were the brand new. So the uh, first one he showed us was just a pair of scissors. They print the scissors, and there's a thin part where the scissors have only one piece, but the, they're thin pieces that just snap, and they work. And so were. he said that in two years, they'd be doing things that normally it takes low cost assembly in China to build mm -hmm. 100, 200 part things that just sort of print, bang them and their machines. Yeah. And I can do that in a, in a way I have a soluble um, mm -hmm. uh, filament that I can yeah. use to do that. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you again. I might have to go. I have to, I have to go pay the bills. So and uh, they're looking for me on another meeting. But uh, no have a great Thanks day. A get, get some rest. Appreciate I'll it, see Scott. Everybody. Yeah, okay, let's let's uh, let's thank you, Scott. Let's wrap this up. Uh, last two minutes a day of this one here. I, I guess uh, pivoting to forward to the pivoting forward to the next twelve months. I'll mention a couple of things that I know are happening, and then hopefully you guys can provide your aspirations for what the next year looks like mm -hmm. before we uh, we insanely do one of these twenty four hour marathons again. Um, uh, the next three months, uh, you know, uh, we're going to have Vancouver as our theme city of next month. We're going to have Sydney the following month. We're going to have uh, Austin, Texas, the uh, the third month. I don't know what happens after that. There's a few European cities. Right now, we're about 4,400 people in the guild. I imagine by the time this uh, guild thing runs around next year, we'll be around myself and Rob argue with each other how much it, it should be. It's probably going to be around 8,000. That's my that's my under over number. Um, it needs to be ten, to, to be self sustaining. It needs to be ten thousand. There you go. Ten thousand so, addressable. I think uh, as a revenue generating entity, we will have a whole bunch of uh, different interns and other people involved in the production of this next year. So there, uh, the moving parts are going to be handled by a, a whack load of people. But I, I do want to thank. Um, I'm looking at two people in particular today beyond Rob that I want to thank in terms of stepping up and doing stuff because it, this type of stuff really relies on people like you that um, do more than just uh, the basics. So, um, so really thanks. And then we got these 12, we've got these 12 ventures that we're launching, right? We'll, uh, we'll do something around play in summer. We'll do something around a book club in the fall and we'll do something around trends in the winter. And then we're back again doing this in the spring. So um uh, aspirations for the guild uh lauren you're uh you're looking chipper you got you got some sleep didn't you, you? Got sleep you Tell got sleep oh you're you might be muted you're muted sean can i tell you who i think you are matt damon you are like buzz Lightyear. <laughs> <laughs> he's, heard that he's got before. a movie coming out. I can he's see got a that. movie coming out. I'm gonna be huge in a month. I don't even he's know what, that means. what does that means. He's talking about your personality too, right? 
<laughs> I don't know what she means. She did this in an earlier session today where it's like, where do you get your sleep? And I didn't know which way she was going to go with it. And she may have a conflicted relationship with Buzz Lightyear too. I'm not too sure. I've never seen you that annoyed great before. Character. What? No, did you ever see Toy Story? So Buzz Lightyear is like this amazing toy and you like he does everything like um just great and it's so annoying because you can't even dislike him because he has a great personality too oh, oh man I, all right whatever discomfort i felt earlier, i feel me. okay now you got um, a friend in me i did not pay that woman to say that no that he has weird. a can-do attitude that's that's Buzz Lightyear in a, in a nutshell. So that's, I, oh, I can see this, it. He's got and this annoying Richie Cunningham thing going on though that just, I don't know, I went down that road with Lauren. So, uh, well, at least I'm not an asshole, right, Lauren? I mean, you can't fall in that camp. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, Sean, Sean was asking when the book's coming out. Yeah, you know name, what? That the is, name is a, it's a good name for a book. The asshole That is record. book worthy. Okay. okay. Everybody needs a swear word or a pseudo swear word in their title. That is literary trend going on right now. So have you two been up all night? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. You got some yeah. sleep? A little sleep. I slept during Australia. Yeah, That's I like figured. an hour. <laughs> I, when you went off camera, I said, uh, this is not when I pivot back to Rob and say, what do you think, Rob? <laughs> yeah. Um, Lauren, uh, I know you're, well, you've been friend to the guild, more involved now. W what's your aspiration if, uh, for the next little bit in terms of this, this weird thing we've got called the Grey Swan Guild? Oh my God. It's just, I, I find it so irritating. It's like every time I just like turn my head, you have, you like double your membership and you have like all these things. It's just like, ah, it, it's, it, you're just like magicians. I don't know how you do it. I just want to learn, like, what are you doing? Like, I, I don't, how do you do all this stuff? How, how do you build oh. things? So it just like, oh my gosh. Well, I can give you a, a reason for that. I think that there are a lot of people in the world with a lot of interesting ideas and a lot of barriers to them by other a-holes that <laughs> you've uh, pointed out. Um, and when you're invited into a guild that says, yeah, Join us, do your thing, enjoy, share, do. That's a, that's a good encapsulation. I like that, Paula. Good. Good why, the, why the hell do we have copywriters doing our web copy when we can just you know, speak into the camera and then we'll get some, some auto, auto transcription of what you've said. We'll throw it right on the website. Someone, uh, did, was that you who sent the transcription machine? There was a transcription machine on the on the Zoom for a while. Mike something or other. Was that someone here? All right. Uh, did you notice? I can't remember. No, I there's an automatic transcription option, which mm -hmm. I noticed we didn't we didn't deploy. But you know that's still know. like the, the same type as Otter AI. It's it's still it's wonky and at times, but it works <laughs> it, for the most part. Well, it's, I I thought it was you, Sean. But anyone who does that should send like like tell people they're doing that well it'd be yeah, good I, for foreign language too though if we uh if we knew we were doing a city if, if that could solve our let's do a spanish city or whatever with uh if it well, that was just transcription if the if the uh if the software becomes viable enough perhaps now that google has broadened its number of languages it's now included even a language that i'm working on with my uh with my linguistics team um they've included quechua and it's it's okay we've, i've tested it out the, their google translate thing um it's not perfect but you know it's not perfect in english so i wouldn't expect to be perfect in quechua either um but uh, the more they add to that the greater the possibility that what you're saying sean uh, might be uh feasible that it'll then uh segue into automation of uh, sorry automation of uh, of these transcription tools to include other languages not be person dependent completely just so that you can get the gist of it you'll i mean a personal interpretation the, the way that i see it being a translator uh, interpretation and translation because language also evolves 
um, will always require a human interface component um, because sometimes the precision of the language is highly important. We know that in just the Ukraine-Russian, you know, peace talks <laughs> or negotiations, uh, the proper translation is important. And I, when I mean proper, I mean precise. But if you're just trying to figure out the gist of something that you're reading because you want to know more about a culture and you don't speak that language, uh, like I do on a regular basis, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's useful to use Google Translate. So it has its uh, applications and purposes. And for Zoom meetings, it could do. However, there is already um, a company that does this on at a high level of precision, but they use a uh, human interface using um, um, virtual um, links. So they have virtual translators on, on file for this, uh, virtual interpreters, um, it's called Kudo. So they, they, they've already started that, that, uh, that trend of on-demand languages, as long as you pay for it ahead of time. Paula, aspiration for the guild. Oh, yeah, new music. Uh, right. The body is your musical interface and not the instrument, or rather your body is your in instrument for making music. So, um, and here's, uh, I think Rob, I mentioned to you before, uh, or I don't know, maybe it was Sean, that the theremin, which is over 100 years old now, is making a huge comeback in terms of um, being a more mainstream instrument that many people want to be using and learning. But not only that, your human voice, which is, has polyphonic, uh, like just your individual person, uh, personal voice has polyphonic possibilities. So there's lots of polyphonic uh, vocal singing now, where you've heard of those tuba, tuba singers, those, you know, um, in, in si Siberian and tuba, tuba in that part of the world, where they have the bass, the bass drone sound that they make, that, oh, that sound. And then they start whistling music on top of that in their own voice. Well, take that to the ne next level. It's happening right now. So those are two examples of what's happening right now. Now, do that with an electromagnetic interface, kind of like theremin, and how can your body, your just spatial movements, without actually touching an instrument, end up causing music to emanate into the world? That's a real thing. It's happening now. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to play a theremin right now uh, over the rainbow, but I don't think it's coming across. But uh, you know, <laughs> it, it's kind of spooky, but uh, I get it. I get it. And the theremin's uh, been around for 100 years. I know. Uh, I was thinking it was in some of those old Orson Welles films, but uh, I had the wrong instrument. That's a scimitar. I think that's a scimitar, but. Yeah. Robert. Star, Star Trek. Theme, theme song for Star Trek, if you don't know what a theremin is. That sound, that, that's now, now take your usual classical music and play it on a theremin by a virtuosa like Carolina, Carolina Ike. She does that now and she's done, she's done, um, uh, she started doing concerts with a future bent into the metaverse. She's actually done a metaverse con concert recently. Her latest, latest uh, 2086 is out there. You can check it out on YouTube. It's kind of cool. The music is, is really beautiful and comparable to any classical concert. And it's her, through the medium of the electromagnetic waves in concert with her body movement. So, cool. Very cool. And what's coming out of uh, MIT Labs, how sound is being projected in the interface between you and the material. So there's dance and music um, and art being created at that point of um, inflection, that, that juncture between your, and, and not even through touch, but just through proximity. Your proximity to these materials causes music to be, to emanate. Amazing. Wow. Amazing. Amazing what times we live in. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. right. Robert James Tiberius Tyree, inventor of Day of the Swan 2, take us home. Oh, he's frozen. You there, Rob? Oh, 
He's not frozen. He is frozen. Rob. Rob's gone. Nope. Rob's back. Unmute yourself, maybe. Unmute. My third Zoom crash. Uh, next year, uh, I would say we're doing Daily Swan 3, but it's 12 hours. <laughs> Anyone yeah. who wants to do 24 hours is, and it's because I'm going to, I want to manage some scarcity. So the best will be at 12 hours. Anything that spills over the rest of the sun travel. Wait a minute. Is that because your digital twin? Is that because your digital twin is doing the other twelve hours? Is that okay? Yeah. So and I then uh, so twelve hours, um, and then the second part, I'd like to see if we can set up on the tech side is self serve, day of the swan. Self serve. So if you're a session leader, you go to a place, you click this, you click that, you click the video. Paula talks to you wisely you click another thing you follow some rules you book your appointment you show up self-serve day of the swan i like my day of the swan like i like my ice cream self-serve huh. love it it's doable but isn't All the right. point of having a, an unconference the exchange of ideas in this as opposed to simply showing up, doing your thing, putting it out there, but then not having that interaction and that creativity. To be clear, Day of the Swan still executes as it executes. It's set up. Its growth to the day is self-serve. So the session leader oh, okay. has all the tools they need to just, no one in the way, Point don't ask anyone, click, 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 and you're ready to go. And then we get notified that, oh, we're, 10% full, 20% full, 120% full. Oh, it's the Sean idea of 36 hours. So you know that Sean's original idea for Day of the Swan? Rob's original idea for Day of the Swan was one hour. Then it went to four hours. Then it went to eight hours. And then when we presented it to the board, it was 36 hours. Sean, why is it 36 hours? Because the, the world creeps around, right? Like, you know. Just to remember that the New Year's in the year 2000, it happened in some Pacific Island, then it took 36 hours, or I don't know, it took a lot of long time for people to get around to. Uh, so if you actually yeah, I don't follow know the sun for the hours. day, it takes 36 hours to follow the sun. So yeah. I think yeah. we can achieve that if there's a bit of self-serve instead of uh, Rob and Sean and Lauren and Paula and Augustine serve. All right, well, we'll figure that out sometime. Next year. Had you thought about doing a weekend as opposed to doing, say, 20, 24 or 36 hours on, in a one full day? Doing a full weekend, sort of like an un, unconference or unconcert, unconcert, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, just setting the stage up for a full weekend. And then that sort of that kind of liberates people to join in when they're free, not during their work day. Um, you know, and for the fun of it, you might get more creative types too. It's not a bad idea to do something on the weekend. I think okay. um, sometimes our live performance cuts in the way of uh, people's work life, obviously. Yeah. So I don't know, remember why we uh, why we put it Thursday. It's thought it was thoughtful, but I don't remember why. I think we just want to protect our weekends, right? Mm. Our time is our time is precious, Rob. Mm. Anyway, it's, we it's should one do one day a year, right, or one weekend a year. That's what we said about this. And then I'll feel bad for a week now. So <laughs> <laughs> why don't we just keep doing day of this one? It's kind of like the same principle as drinking. Keep drinking and you never have to get hung over. The same thing <laughs> day of this one, right? Yeah. God, I can't believe you all have the stamina for this. Like kudos. <laughs> so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do one of these. I'm going to do a Lauren imitation when I got to be right for it though. And I'll like tap into one of your immense skills and I'll go, Lauren, I just don't understand how good you are. You know, you're like, you're like Smurfette. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Okay, so we have Buzz Lightyear and Smurfette. Now, what are what are Rob and I? Okay, uh, that's a good question. No, no, you guys now now can't get out of it. We have we have our alter egos, our toy alter egos. Who are we now? Lauren, you wanna you, you came up with Buzz Lightyear. You wanna come up with one of these guys? Oh, Lauren, I'll think of it. I'll think of a good one. I mean, I guess I guess Gargamel's off limits. He was a bad guy, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, we, we want to keep it positive, right? Yeah, we do. Try. I'm, I'm, I'm going through my Disney movies. I'm trying to think of ones. Jeez. <laughs> well, no pressure. You can always come back to it. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, the green. Is that Cato or the Green Hornet? Or is it um, Zoro? Oh, Arsène Lupin. Oh, you Zoro. know the, that uh, that uh, Omar Sy movie where it was the the uh, if you guys ever watch foreign movies, there's this um, uh, French movie where he plays the sort of like the robber bandit, uh, the the Robin Hood but French style, shall we say? So it was the Gentleman Thief. That's oh yeah, I remember movie. that. I love Omar Sy. Yes. So, so Arsène Lupin is the is the name of the um, of the character that. When the movie gets made, I'll sign them up. Man, you know what I'm looking through right now is there Snow Crash characters that that fit fit Paula because I know you're a Snow Crash fan. So I am. I am. So can I just ask I Paula? Do you speak Portuguese? Because you have a Portuguese name. What's it your sounds relationship? like she's Portuguese on mute. <laughs> Concertiza, <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't realize it was on mute. My, my parents are originally from Portugal, so I do speak Portuguese. Um, oh, okay. And, where, where? and Spanish and French and Italian and um, some Quechua and uh, some Mohawk and, uh, well, I clearly speak English. Wow, okay, that's super interesting. I'm and a linguist. Oh, okay. yeah. wow. <laughs> Amazing. That's pretty well, cool. Well, you know, we all have our superpowers, right? Yes. Very nice. There's a movie about oh. that, right, Paula? This is one of the other Paula's. Oh, the, the Amy Adams one? Oh, yeah, I love that one. Yeah, yeah, that was Awaken. I think it was, what is, was it called? I can't remember now. It's one of I, your I love that. <laughs> I, I'm alluding to one of your superpowers, which you just proved. If something's going on, and there needs to be a movie reference to it. Paula is a movie. It's just live IMDb, but way smarter. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, uh, but uh, about being smarter than than that. But um, but I also managed a, do a documentary film festival here in my city for a while through um, Cinema Politica. So I, I have a pulse on a lot of films, and I'm a I'm a cinephile, so I always have been. Um, so anything on Netflix that particularly you know or pertaining and the fact that there's you know stuff in many different languages like the uh, the omar sai movies for example um which i, I watch in french is usually quite uh telling so yep there's uh, lots of interesting stuff there so you have yet to tell me what my what my disney or or animated avatar is i'll i'll leave it i'll leave you to it <laughs> Smurfette, Buzz Lightyear, uh, Arsene yeah, there's, there's, there's sexism and good characters here. There, why are most of them male? Oh, characters? I love Smurfette. Smurfette was the bomb. She was she mm. was the smartest one of the group. Oh, well, that's, take, more that's taking Lauren Smurfette now. So we got to find something. Else I'm just saying. Else. I'm just saying. She was the smartest one of the group. <laughs> What about the two fish? What are the two fish in that Disney movie? Just uh... the two fish. Yeah, come on. What's the movie called again? Like they're goldfish. Finding Nemo. Oh, you're talking about Dory and uh, and. Uh, you want to be somebody from Frozen? Do you want to be Elsa? Sure. Why not? I've never oh. seen the movie. Actually, I've never seen that. So, yeah. you know, I like Married. Actually, I, I like the the the. Red-haired young little 
Scott's girl. I thought that she was kind of oh, kind of cool. She, you know, um, I have to get a filter for your hair, but we could do it. We could do that. <laughs> I've been known to have reddish streaks in it when the light hits it the right way. So, <laughs> and, engine red, Debbie Harry. No problem. Definitely. All right, I'm gonna mine. have to. Uh, <laughs> uh, you guys can keep going if you want. I, I'm going to have to lead a different life here, I think. So, yes. over yes. and out ski. It's the weekend. It was a pleasure, gentlemen. Much. And uh, Lauren, I was going to say some reset, but I, I don't want to. Likewise. I will Great. have to say. Yeah, but it was it's good. Um, <laughs> thank you for the invite. Thanks for, uh, for the collaboration. I think it was great. And we all just. To, uh, everybody show, show. Every, no no everybody i need to everybody just say goodbye do i do i have to do that it's 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 a how do we do it okay that way great uh, all leaders no followers here that's great thank you everybody thank you thank you thank you one million thank yous lauren we'll talk soon yes awesome. it's true it's true good night Good night, good night, good day, good afternoon. <laughs> That's how you said End of the day of Swan, 2022, Mark.